What's up guys? Today we're going to do something interesting. We're going to go over the copycat bird. This is a question I've been getting asked by a lot of my students. Raven, I know what to do against f4, d5, but what am I supposed to play if they play f5? Yeah, surprisingly enough, the copycat system against f4, this is one of the few times that they can get away with the copycat system. Uh, pretty much whatever you do up until move 8, they're going to be able to copy you. So if you go knight c3, they'll go knight c6. If you go knight h3, they could go knight h6. I wouldn't recommend you play knight h3. It's not a good score for the knight, but you get my point. So what do we do here? I spent a lot of time working on this in my course, and uh, if you want to get more details on this, of course, feel free to get my course. But um, with that being said, we should be aiming for a fianchetto system. I was able to find something that was really poisonous here. We play knight f3, they play knight f6, and this is the one time our bishop is going to go eastward over to g2. We'll play g3, they'll hit us with g6, we'll play bishop g2, they'll play bishop g7. And what we're going for is we're trying to get tension with d3 and e4 here. So we're going to start with d3, they play d6, we play knight c3, they play knight c6, we'll castle, they'll castle, and finally we play e4. Now... Going back through this entire variation, let me skip to the beginning just for a second. Um, of course, they could have deviated at any point, but the idea is that if they're playing the copycat system, they're not trying to play objectively the best moves against uh, the bird. They're just trying to get a normal looking position, and they were taught that they could copy you in the bird and be fine. And largely, they're correct. Unfortunately, though, they're, they're going to copy you, and they're going to keep copying you until they face this position. And this is a very difficult position for them to handle. It's still relatively equal, but it's very poisonous and very difficult. Uh, for those of you who are wondering if when you play this system, they're not going to copy you, they are going to copy you. Whenever I play against the copycat uh, with them playing f5 move 1, invariably, like 95% of the time, they copy me. So let's talk about this position now. What is white threatening? In a lot of cases, we want to push e5, but we need to be careful about it. We can't even do it just yet. For instance, let's say that they burn a move with something like king h8. If we push e5, takes, takes, everything looks good and dandy. It looks like we're going to play d4 and be fine and have a very strong pawn. Like, hopefully their knight would be kicked out, and then we can play d4 with a fantastic position. But the problem is that in this position, they have this trick they can take on e5. We would take with our knight. They're going to hit us with a check, and they're going to win the piece right back be up a solid pawn, and be significantly better. So we can't do that. Um, in this position, we are threatening to... We, we want to play e5, but we need to wait for the right time. Uh, so we're going to get into how to do that. They have pretty much two moves here. They have e5 and e6. Because your opponent is playing the copycat, most likely he's going to play e5. Because he's a copycat. He's trying to copy you. That's what copycats do, don't they? Um, I do want to briefly talk about e6, though. e6 is interesting. Again, due to that same trick, you cannot play e5. Don't play e5. I don't want to get any emails from, uh, from any people saying, Oh, I played e5 and I lost the game. Thanks a lot, Raven. I don't want that. Okay? Listen to my advice here. <laughs> don't play e5 if they can hit you with queen d4 check. What we're going to do is we're going to play a4. I really like this move. We're just gaining more and more space. We're trying to get our pawn to a5 to really hem in the structure. The idea is we're waiting for them to burn out this option. We want them to play something like bishop d7 when then we can play e5. And for instance, I think I go over this in my course, yeah. Takes, takes, knight d5. Already we've gotten a very strong pawn here. We could play d4 with a healthy advantage, but we could transform the advantage into something even nicer. We're going to take, they take with the pawn, we play d4, we have a very good protected pass pawn here on e5. And, uh, yeah, I think this is where my course ends the variation. Or maybe I play bishop e... Yeah, it's bishop e6, knight g5. We kick the bishop out. They play queen d7. And here we just want to make sure that they cannot play h6 and g5. Because if they could do that, they might actually be able to make use of this kingside majority. So here we would just play h4. And this is already close to strategically winning for white. Which is cool. It's a good, it's a good system. So, uh, so going back, though... I think the only other move I talk about, there are a few moves. They could play a5 here, and if they play a5, I actually can't remember. I think we play rook e1, then we're threatening to play e5. That's pretty much what we're going for. We want to play e5, we're just waiting for the perfect moment, and we want to dodge that queen d4 trick. So really do, I can't stress it enough, guys, be very careful about that queen d4 trick. That queen d4 trick is really waiting to, 
is really rearing to go. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, they could play a6, and then we would advance to a5. And the idea is we're crunching in on their structure. Technically, our rook is going to be passive looking at this pawn while the knight is guarding it. But for the moment, we, we are really hemming in their pieces here. And the idea is, again, we're just waiting out the clock. We're going to play queen e2 or rook e1 and then e5. And if they try to do anything to prevent that with something like bishop d7, we can just play e5 immediately. Again, no queen d4, then we're free to go. We're free to run. Let's go for e5. All right. Uh, so now we can get to the good stuff. Now we can get to the main course, the, the silver platter. They play e5 here. Pretty much in this position, what you want to do is we want to shackle them with some type of strategic disadvantage. Uh, so there are a few ways to do it. And we're going to take here on f5. And now they have two options. They actually have three. Yeah, they have three options. They could take with the pawn. They could take with the bishop. Or you might get some really diehard copycats who do this. And we're going to start with this move. So they take here. We take. They take. They're, of course, they're going to just keep copying us. We take. Now, finally, this is check. <laughs> it's check. They can't copy us no more. They take with the knight. We could take and we would be up a pawn. And from what I understand, that would be pretty good. Uh, taking with a pawn would definitely be okay. But even better is queen e1. And the idea is that after pawn takes, we play king h1. At the moment, a material count says we're down a pawn. We're down a pawn, but we're up a big attack here. Where our pieces are going to come in so much quicker to the attack. I think the way a variation of my course goes, it goes knight e5. We play queen g3. They take. We take. They play king h8. And we play bishop f4. This pawn is a road apple. Sitting duck. A road apple, Newman. It's waiting to be picked up. We're going to play rook f2, take on h2, slide our rook over to g1. And, you know, at the moment we're down a pawn, but we're about to equalize it. And just look at how good our pieces are. Our pieces are so much better than theirs. If they wanted to bring this rook over to the attack, or to, not to the attack, but to the side of the board where there's about to be an attack happening, that would take forever. Meanwhile, within three moves, we're going to be completely mobilized here. Uh, this isn't to mention that our, our bishops aren't also weighing down on their queen side. From what I remember, the computer already says that this is winning. All right, computer, chess.com computer, chess.com computer is always tripping. But normally, I think my, my big stockfish computer, my super deep, super GM, uh, my Soviet nuclear uh, Chernobyl computer says that that position was close to winning. Um, all right, so now let's get to the new move. Um, so takes, they got two other moves here. I want you to keep in mind both of them. Bishop takes is by far the strongest option. If they take this way, you just play knight h4, you have very good pressure here, and they, they're always sort of waiting around for you to take here with fantastic pressure on f5. And I love this tension here. Look at that tension. That tension is like, uh, I don't even know. I was going to make some analogy, but I can't even think of an analogy. It's like, um... It's really, it's, 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 it's tense. Tense is an excellent word. So the idea is we're attacking this pawn. We can always threaten to take on e5. Meanwhile, if they ever take on f4, they fragment their pawn structure in half, and we would never be worried about this type of position. This, strategically speaking, this is already close to loss for them. They have an enormous weakness on f5. We also, as normally comes with isolated pawns, you get a nice isolated square in front of it that's an outpost. This is much better for white. I would assume it's already close to winning. Okay, apparently computer... Computer on chess.com is one of the most sober, uh, unbelievable milk toast. I'm, we're not inviting the computer back. The computer is not, computer is definitely not the life of the party here. But um, let's get back to the game. So that's if G takes. And one last thing I wanted to add, I'm going to be uh, commenting on a game I played in a recent title Tuesday. Really cool. I played against someone extremely strong, 2600 Fide. And uh, we got this position, he didn't know what to do, and your boy uh, really kept the honor of the bird alive. Um, it was a very good game. I beat the 2600 feet eight very badly. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that video. It will come out sometime later this week. Um, okay, so takes, they take with the bishop, and now here we play h3. And the idea is that we might play g4, we might play knight h4, we're keeping all our cards on the table. They have a few moves they can make here. Um, I'm trying to remember each of them. Well, they can't play knight h5 immediately because we play g4. Um, and you're just going to see, your, as you look at this position, you start to appreciate that white's position is just a lot more flexible. Um, I think, what was one thing I wanted to look at? They could play queen d7 here. 
Um, and then we take, they take, we play g4, they play bishop e6. Um, and here we have very good control over the e4 square. Uh, keep in mind that, yeah, when they take with the bishop here, another classic idea is just to take, and if they take back with the d-pawn, then we have a fantastic golden square on e4 to implant our knights on. Um, I'm trying to remember how that position happens exactly. How does that position happen? Man, I cannot remember. I cannot remember, but uh, if you get my course on the bird, it's somewhere in there. But the, trust me, there are a lot of these positions where you, you make this trade, something like this comes about, and you just implant the knight on e4, and you have a very steady, a very stable advantage. So apart from that, what else can they try here? Um, they can't really try much else. I think their only real option here is to take. Here we take with the bishop. Again, we get to a borderline identical position, but the idea is that our, our pawn being able to be pushed to g4 um, makes quite a lot of difference. I gotta think about what to do here. I'm gonna, I really, I wanna check the variations here against knight h5. Maybe, am I misremembering this? I'm gonna, yeah, just give me a second. I'm, we're gonna strip this from the, we're gonna cut this out of the tape. <laughs> uh, h3. Okay, no, we do take with the bishop. Yeah, sorry. We do, sorry, excuse me. Excuse me. We do take with the bishop. Now, in this position, they have a few moves here. I just wanted to talk about one or two of them because already here, um, I can tell that I'm testing your patience. We're very far out in the opening. Uh, I like going over these variations just to show the various ideas. But to be completely clear, just memorize like the first seven moves that I showed. You don't need to memorize the rest. Uh, all of these diehard copycats, if they're going to go for some system... They're going to go for that one over here where they're just taking the whole house and uh, you end up with this position. And you can, you know, you can go rook f2, rook takes h2 and play for checkmate. Yeah, well, we're playing a game here, pal. Ukraine has came to you, how about I take your little bonus? Um, but so yeah, let me just briefly talk about this other position here. So all right, so in this example, the really diehard copycats, if they're really on their A game, they'll play h6 here. And again, we get a copycat position. It's a symmetrical position. You could split the, the position straight down the middle, and it looks like the white setup is looking in a mirror at blacks. We're going to play knight h4 here, hitting f5 and g6. And again, the really diehard copycats are going to play knight h5. We take on f5. Um, and if they take on f4, they're, they're completely lost here. I got this position in a recent uh, Quest to 3000 video. We take, they take, and here we hit them with knight e6. And this is the whole difference. We're just hitting them with this trick way too soon. If they play queen e7, we can take on f8. And uh, I think here we can either take on f8 or we could even maybe play queen e2. Queen e2 is a little spicy, but I think, I think queen e2 should work. Let me check with the computer. All right, apparently queen e2 is dead even, which is shocking. I guess they have rook f6 here. Um, but yeah, suffice to say, just take on f8. Your king looks a little exposed, but they don't have perpetual, and you're up of rook here. Um... So yeah, in this position, knight e6, the last thing to look at is what happens if they play knight e3. Here we play queen e2. They can trade one pair of rooks, but now time's up. We're going to take on e3 because they have to move their queen, and they cannot move their queen anyway. They cannot move their queen anywhere to defend uh, the knight on e3. They cannot play queen g5 because our knight is covering it. So in the end, that is the copycat variation. I think that's everything I wanted to discuss. Um... Yeah, there's really nothing else. I think that this, a very interesting system. Again, remember, you got to hit them with the fianchetto th this time. This is the one structure that you you play the fianchetto with g3, bishop, g2, and you're aiming for a quick d3, knight, c3. Get castle first, and then throw an e4. And, you know, watch the copycats. Um, yeah, watch the copycats collapse pretty much. I think this is a fantastic, fantastically poisonous setup. Keep your eyes out for that video. Uh, I I demolished a 2600 fide in this system. And uh, I've had great results so far online playing against the copycat system. No one is ready for this. Everyone thinks, like I say in all my videos, everyone thinks the bird is a joke, uh, but they're gonna be shown to be the clowns. So with that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one.